In this video, you learn about the principles of training and how to apply them to any fitness program. You'll also gain a clear understanding of why incorporating these principles into your exercise routine is necessary to improve fitness. These are the four elements you need to think about to create workouts that fit your goals and fitness level. The first thing to set up your workout plan is frequency. How often you exercise. Based on the exercise guidelines set out by the American College of Sports Medicine in how often you work out. For cardio, depending on your goal guidelines, recommend for moderate exercise, five or more days a week. For intense cardio, three days a week. If you want to lose weight, more frequent workouts often up to six or more days a week. For strength training, two or three non-consecutive days a week, at least one or two days in between sessions. However, if you do a split routine, like upper body one day and lower body on the next, your workout will be more frequent than total body workout. Intensity also has to do with how hard you work during exercise. For cardio, you will usually monitor intensity by heart rate, perceived exertion, the top test, a heart rate monitor, or a combination of those measures. It's a good idea to have a mixture of low, medium, and high-intensity cardio exercises so you can stimulate different energy systems and avoid overtraining. For strength training, monitoring the intensity of strength training involves a different set of parameters. Your intensity is made up of exercises you do, the amount of weight you lift, the number of repetitions, and the number of sets. If you are a beginner, looking to build a muscle stability and endurance, you need to do lighter weights, few sets, and high repetitions. Example, two or three sets of 12 to 20 repetitions. If your goal is to grow muscles, higher number of sets with moderate amount of repetitions. Example, four sets of 10 to 12 repetitions. If you want to build strength, use heavy weights, more sets with fewer repetitions. Example, five sets of three repetitions. The next element of your workout plan is how long you exercise each session. For cardio, exercise guidelines suggest 30 to 60 minutes of cardio, but duration of your workout depends on your fitness level and the type of workout you're doing. For a beginner, 15 to 20 minutes. Doing steady state cardio, example, Going for a run or cardio machine, 30 to 60 minutes. Interval training or high intensity, 20 to 30 minutes. For strength training, how long you lift weights depends on the type of workout you're doing and your schedule. For example, a total body workout could take up to an hour, whereas a split routine could take less time because you're working fewer muscle groups. The type of exercise you do is the last part of the FIT principle and an easy one to manipulate to avoid overuse injuries or weight loss tattoos. Cardio is easy to change since any activity that gets your heart rate up counts. Running, walking, cycling, dancing, and the elliptical trainer are some of the wide variety of activities you can choose. Having more than one go-to cardio activity is the best way to reduce boredom and your body needs variability along with progressive overload. Strength training workouts can also offer variety. They include any exercise when you're using some type of resistance to work your muscles. Body weight exercises can also be considered a form of strength training. You can easily change the type of strength workouts you do from total body training to adding things up like supersets or pyramid training to liven things up. In order to get the most out of your training, you must follow some basic simple training principles, which are overload, specificity, reversibility, and variance. In order to progress and improve our fitness, we have to put our bodies under additional stress. Applying these training principles will cause long-term adaptations, enabling our bodies to work more efficiently to cope with a higher level of performance. Overloading can be achieved by the following acronym. 
F-I-T-T. Frequency, intensity, time, and type. This principle relates to the type of training that you do. It should be specific to you and your sport. You should train the energy system which you use predominantly and the fitness and skill components most important to your sport. Example, don't run 5,000 meters in training if you're a sprinter. Another example is to swim a lot in training than expecting your running to improve significantly. Use it or lose it. Basically, if you stop training, then the improvements that you have made will be reversed. So if you are ill or have a holiday and do not train for a period of time, even as little as a week, you may not be able to resume training at the point where you live off. Try to vary your training to keep you interested and to give your body a different challenge. Remember, a change is as good as a rest. Many professional athletes will play a completely different sport in between their main season to keep their fitness up with still having a rest. Basketball legend like Michael Jordan likes to play golf and baseball during his free time. This training method improves strength, power, or muscular endurance. The area of fitness developed is determined by the resistance, repetitions, and sets performed. Resistance training can be performed using dumbbells, barbells, resistance machines, pulleys, body weight or equipment such as kettlebells, resistance bands, or sandbags. The idea of resistance training is to contract a muscle against a resistance. The exercises selected must relate to the muscle groups and used in sports and your training goals. A sprint cyclist, for example, would focus on strength training in their leg muscle. Often, six to eight exercises are performed, starting with compound exercises such as squat, deadlift, or bent over rows, and finishing with isolation exercises such as bicep curls or lateral raises. Here is an example of a whole body muscular hypertrophy training session. Perform three sets of 10 repetitions of the following exercises with two minutes rest in between sets. training is used to increase power and strength. These translates to higher jumps and faster spin times. It typically involves bounding, hopping, or jumping style exercises, but can include medicine ball work or box work. Plyometric training involves an eccentric contraction where muscles lengthen under tension, followed by a concentric contraction where muscles shorten under tension. The eccentric phase or landing phase involves the preloading of agonist muscle. The concentric phase or takeoff phase uses the stored energy to increase the force of movement, resulting in a more powerful contraction. This type of training is very demanding on the body. Usually, three to five sets of three to five repetitions are performed. This training involves low intensity exercise for long periods of time without a rest or break. A performer normally performs continuous training for a minimum of 20 minutes in the aerobic training zone, which is 60% to 80% of the heart rate max. An example continuous training workout could be a 30 minute run at 60% heart rate max. Adjusting the pace or effort of the activity can vary the exercise intensity. For example, instead of running 60% heart rate max, increase it to 70%. For 
Athlete is a Swedish word for speed play and is a form of continuous training during which the speed or terrain of the activity is varied, so both aerobic and anaerobic energy systems are stressed. This could involve period of sprinting, jogging, or walking, or could include uphill, downhill, and flat running. Due to the nature of different intensities, this type of training is useful for improving cardiovascular fitness, muscular endurance, speed, recovery time, and lactate threshold. This is often a more demanding form of training compared to continuous training due to the higher intensities. Example of a fartlek training session. This training involves a period of exercises or work followed by a period of rest. It is effective at improving cardiovascular fitness, muscular endurance, speed, recovery time, and lactate threshold. Typically, interval training involves work-rest ratio of 1 is to 2. For example, exercising for 30 seconds, then resting for 1 minute. The length of work periods and rest is dependent on your intended outcome. Here is an example of interval training workout. This training involves a series of exercises known as stations being performed one after the other. Typically, circuit training involves 8 to 10 stations performed for a certain number of repetitions or time. When planning a circuit, it is important to vary the muscle groups you work and think about the number of repetitions or time spent on each station. A circuit can be designed to develop any aspect of fitness but tend to be used for general body conditioning. That's the bell! Before we end, let's have a summary of what we have discussed. That is all and we are done for our class. Don't forget to click like, share, leave a comment, and subscribe to Buhay Maestra. Bye!